Welcome to the Uncensored Society Podcast, where guests share their insights, experiences, and tactics to help you accelerate your business. So building, scaling, and monetizing your business is made easier. And now, your host, Kay Suthar. Hey guys, oh my goodness, I have an awesome guest for us today. His name is Casey and in fact he is the founder of an award-winning sustainable building company called The Conscious Builder. He has written almost 400 blog posts on topics such as marketing, branding, entrepreneurship, personal development and much, much more. He's learned about adapting, right? Adapting to change from a very, very young age. And he has said that learning to do this from a young age has served his business so well. And so today he's going to be sharing with us a little bit about where he's come from, what changes he's made, and where he's going with his business moving forward. Please welcome Casey Gray. Welcome to the show, Casey. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Of course, of course. Oh my goodness. So we had a conversation um, behind the scenes um, well, a while ago before you've come onto this um, episode today and you've told me some of the amazing epic things and the revelations you've had. And you're not just a business owner, but you are a massive family man, right? And so I knew, I knew that there were so many people that had to hear, you know, what you're about, how you've done it, because it will give people hope and inspire, motivate them to actually push forward so thank you for coming on to the show yeah i'm excited me too me too now before we get into in depth about what you do what your business is about please tell us a little bit about you your background and you know what you were doing or how this business came about yeah, so I can go back. Uh, I'll comment on what you said there about how I learned to adapt to change. Uh, I come from a, a great family. I have four brothers and two sisters, uh, but they're all half. So my parents have been divorced and remarried four times each. And uh, it's been, a, I tell people we kind of have a family shrub. We grow sideways. We don't grow. We're, we're not a family <laughs> tree. Um, but but it's been good. Like I didn't have a terrible childhood by any means. Uh, sure, my parents were divorced, but I was. they were close for the majority of my childhood. They were close by where once I got to the point where I was old enough to bike by myself, I could bike from house to house. And they always let me choose where I wanted to go, which was always great. But the change part came because at one house, I was the oldest. I was the kind of had to lead by example. And at the other house, I was the baby by more than nine years. So it was uh, there was lots of change and, and having to adapt from house to house and, and family to family. So everyone still gets along. So everything's everything's great. Um, but that that was kind of the beginning. I didn't realize how that affected me. You know, those things when you're a child, you don't really realize it till you're older and you start to do your own personal development and and look into yourself and realize that, oh, this probably worked out for my benefit for whatever, whatever reason. Right. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that was one of them because, uh, you know, business does have a lot of change. Life does have a lot of uncertainty, uh, as we've all especially realized over the last couple of years. And uh, I think the, a big quote that's really stuck with me is a Tony Robbins quote. And he says that the quality of your life is, is in direct proportion, the quality uh, or the amount of uncertainty that you can live with. Uh, And that means, I think that's, it comes down to, you can look at that a lot of different ways, but there's, you know, faith, trust in there, depending on what you believe in uh, and realizing that we literally, literally have zero control over the majority of things in our life. And it's the only thing we have control over is ourselves and how we act or react. Most so. definitely. I totally agree with that. Fantastic. <laughs> and so I would love for you to tell us a little bit about your business because I've got so many questions um, to talk about there. But tell us a little bit about what your business is and how it benefits people. Yeah, so my business uh, is ultimately my main core business is doing renovations and custom homes here in Canada. But we focus on healthy, comfortable, and efficient homes. So high, we like to call them high performance homes. So above the building code. Uh, so we're really focusing on the envelope, making sure homes are airtight, well insulated, uh, well ventilated, and we use you know products that are better for the environment. Ultimately, everything we do is custom, so it, it does depend on what the client wants. So that's one aspect of the business. The other aspect of the business that we are now uh, putting a lot more focus and attention on, we started really growing it when 
uh, over the last couple of years was, is the Conscious Builder Academy, where it's more directed towards helping other contractors become better builders and better business people because the industry as a whole is really driven by small companies, not by massive companies. And I've realized that being, you know, I'm a carpenter by trade, but uh, I didn't go to business school and they don't teach you business in carpentry school. And uh, they, uh, I once said that to somebody and they said, don't worry, they don't teach you business in business school either. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so uh, yeah, so I, I've kind of learned uh, a lot and made a lot of mistakes, lost a lot of money over the years. And uh, I want to help other contractors ultimately stay in business and build better homes along the way and stronger teams. Uh, because we need it uh, as, you know, as we grow and we need more homes and we realize how important health is uh, through, through everything that's happening. Right, right, exactly. And so tell me this, um, Casey, at what point did you realize that maybe working for somebody else and getting a job wasn't for you and that you had to start a business? So I always knew, uh, this might have came from the fact that my mom was an entrepreneur. Uh, she had her own business as for not my entire childhood, but uh, her and my stepdad had started our own business. And then ever since then, she's always been doing her own thing. So I kind of had that, I think, kind of just ingrained in me and in, in watching that and uh, being raised in a way that's like, be independent, do your own thing, don't care about what other people, you know, run your own race sort of thing. So I, I always knew. So when I got into construction, and I got into construction because really that was my best course at school. I enjoyed it. Right. So obviously right. it was my best course because I enjoyed it. So, mm -hmm. uh, I got into carpentry and I remember when I started, when I found the company that I worked for, uh, when I first met him, I told him that eventually I want to own my own business, Right. but he still hired me. And I ended up working for him for almost seven years before I went on my own. So it was always something that I knew I wanted, but I didn't really have a good reason other than the fact that I just wanted the freedom of, you know, going after my, setting my own goals and going after my own client sort of thing. Right, right. Uh, so, I mean, was there ever something you wish someone had told you during your career journey? Because basically you're just trying to figure this all out yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the most important thing that I've realized is when I started my business, I didn't really have a purpose and I didn't have a good reason why I started it. And my reason why didn't come until my wife and I found out that we were having our son. And when you, for all the parents out there, you realize that your thinking changes, right? When I started my business, I was like my early 20s. So I'm just about, you know, making money and, and creating a, a name for myself in the industry. Uh, but when you have somebody else who's going to be looking up to you, then you start to think a little bit differently, not only because you have to provide for them, but also because you have to lead by example. And I always tell people, my son has been my greatest teacher because he does what I do, not what I say. He does listen. He doesn't, but you know what I mean? Like they, right. if they have bad habits, it's usually because of their parents, right. Yes. Uh, or who they're hanging out with, but usually at, at a young age, the people they hang out with most is the parents. So if there's something that they picked up, probably got it from me, not his mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that's amazing. so that's kind of where I started to think, okay, right, if, if I'm going to tell him that he can be, do whatever he wants in life, I have to do the same. And I want to make sure that I leave this place better than it was when I showed up for him and my grandkids and so forth. Uh, so that's when I started at that point, my wife and I started to do a lot of personal development. We started attending some Tony Robbins events. I started reading a lot more. Wow. So this was, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And it started to kind of the whole word conscious started to come into focus for us and just being aware because that, you know, consciousness is a state of awareness, right? And it it's, that's the beginning of change. You can't change or become better until you're aware of what needs to be changed. And that's really the first step is waking up. And most of us go through life. And I was up until that point, you know, basically sleepwalking, just kind of going with the flow, whatever other people are doing, you know, product of, I remember one of the best carpenters that I learned from, uh, I remember him saying, I, I never forget this. He's like, it's not my fault. It's a product of my environment. And he said it in a context of like, he was probably being a jerk or something on site and making a joke. Right. And I remember thinking that I'm like, that's so true. Like we are all products of our environment, but we get to choose the environment that we put ourselves in. Yes. And that's what people don't realize. Uh, so that's when, you know, the conscious builder started to come in and I, I started to have a stronger reason why, and that reason why is what's gotten me through 
all of the ups and downs of business and the four year lawsuit I was in and the, you know, the jobs that you price wrong and all, all sorts of things. Right. And, and, uh, business is not easy. There's no such thing as an overnight success. Uh, it's always an overnight success, 10, 15, 20 years in the making. <laughs> you don't hear about them until they become a success sort of thing. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, now you just mentioned a couple of things that you actually went through as you were building this business. And I was actually going to ask you, was there ever a time where you felt scared on your entrepreneurial journey and what did you do to shift that? Yeah, I think there's, I'm proud. I've probably felt afraid many times at some point, but usually that, that fear comes from your mind thinking of something that could happen that hasn't happened yet. Yes. Right. That that's right. that's ultimately what it is. Whenever we're afraid, wherever we're anxious or whatever, something like that, it's usually just projecting something that could happen as opposed to something that has actually happened. Right. Uh, so it's the uncertainty of things. Yeah. So once again, the environment is powerful, making sure that you're surrounding yourself with people and listening to podcasts like this that kind of help you realize that you're not alone and that other people have gone through this and it's not the end of the world if the worst doesn't happen, but there's no point. It's not beneficial to focus on the negative, right? Uh, it's one of, that's where like meditation has become very powerful for me. I meditate every single day and obviously I read every single day uh, and health. I've realized that like what I put into my body also affects my mindset. If I, if I go through a day and I eat maybe food that I usually don't eat, not that I eat a lot of crap, but, uh, on days that I do, I actually feel it for the next couple of days. And I'm like, why am I off? You know, and you, and you start to become more aware of all these things as you start to, to realize this connection, right? This mind, body, soul connection. And it does play a big part in all aspects of our lives, including business when things, that uncertainty hits us. Uh, and it probably, I'm, I'm, probably not different than many people. Like where it hits me is I'm usually so busy during the day that I don't have time to think about it. It's not till my head hits the pillow that I'm literally about to fall asleep. And then I'm like, and then all the things that could go wrong kind of rush into my head during that like transitional period. And then I get a jolt of energy and then I have to like work through it before I can fall asleep again. Oh my goodness. So it does affect uh, uh, your sleep pattern. Oh, absolutely. Right. So how do you get over that? Because I can imagine there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that aren't sleeping, right? They are stressed out and it's just impossible that they that they just fall into. So how do you get over that? Because you still need to be rested, you know, meditation and eating well and doing all that is great, but you still need to have your rest to be able to play full out in your business. So how do you deal with that aspect? I think it comes down to a good routine before you go to sleep, don't be reading emails up until you go to bed. <laughs> don't, if you know that there's something that could be, uh, you know, a problem that you need to deal with, maybe don't read that or something that's going to get your, if you know, it's going to invoke some anxiety, maybe avoid that late at night. Mm. Um, I'm also an advocate for dealing with the problems head on when they come on, come up, uh, it's easier said than done. It's easy to push things down the road, but the longer you push it, push it down the road, the, more it weighs, weighs you down and affects your sleep, for example. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's not about avoiding the problems. It's about doing, figuring out what you need to do in order to ease your, ease your mind. And, uh, that could be meditation right before bed. Like when, uh, like, so that example that I shared, when that happens, I just have to go back to essentially, I meditate myself to sleep where I will lie there. I don't put any pressure, right? What happens is like, Oh, I have to sleep. I have to sleep. I have to sleep. I got so much to do. I've, I've stopped doing that, right? And it takes practice. It's not overnight. It's all right. I'm going to lie here. I got this energy. It is what it is. I'm just going to breathe through it. I'm going to focus on other stuff, focus on my breath. Uh, and eventually I, I fall asleep. It's kind of like, you know, the whole counting the sheep sort of thing. But, uh, it's, it's cheesy, but for me, for me, it works. Right. So I don't know if there's like just a trick you can do. I think it's, it's a combination of setting up yourself for success through the environment that you've set up for yourself. Yeah. Uh, right. Like having a good, evening routine, not watching screens right before you go to bed, maybe reading. I, I like to read. Reading usually puts me to sleep at night. Uh, so, but reading something that like feeds your mind. Um, yeah. But you can read, like I've also read uh, other books that are, are maybe um, uh, like fiction 
books where I'm not as into them, but sometimes I just don't feel like reading another business book or personal development right before bed. And I'll just have something. So it's just something to focus my mind on something else so I can get that sleep that I need. Definitely. One of the tricks I guess I use for myself is, again, it is comes to that point where it's at night, you're going to sleep and it's quiet and all of a sudden all this chitter chatter happens in your mind. And I always keep a notebook next to me with a pen. And mm. anything that's running through my mind, write it down. Just write it all down. Because the minute you put it on paper and you've got it out of your mind, right, I think that totally helps you to, I guess, to just relax and just go to sleep. And then once you've written it down, you can deal with that the next day. For sure. And I do like, yeah, if there's something that came into mind that I need to remember to do, I have to write it. I usually, I, I don't have a notepad. I'll just put it in my phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. The stuff that usually keeps me awake though, is, is just something like my brain racing about some p- problem that I need to deal with. And then I'm trying to work through solutions or something like that before I go to right. sleep. And I'm like, all right, now is not the time brain. <laughs> the, the, the other thing too, that is a practice and that's why meditation is a practice. Uh, and that's why we call it. It's something that you need to continuously do. It's not just, you know, you don't go to the gym once and you're set for life. It's, it's you go to the gym constantly it becomes a lifestyle Uh, and i think that's where what we have to do for our minds is we have to work our mind out we have to train it and we need to constantly train it and the more you do it the stronger it gets and the and the more you realize that it's not about controlling our mind it's about not attaching to the thoughts because we are not our thoughts right just because you thought it doesn't mean it's true Right. And then exactly. uh, it's don't don't believe everything you think. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Right. And I guess what you're really saying is start forming healthier habits for yourself. So Absolutely. if you know something isn't serving you, change it, change it so that it does actually serve you in your business. So I love that. I love it. Now, tell me a little bit more um, about your business, because you mentioned that you build sustainable homes. Now, where did that idea come from? Well, that came from, like I mentioned, my son, I had to start thinking about my business a little bit differently. So when I realized that I was going to have this little person looking up to me, I said, all right, what do I want to do? I don't want to just build homes like everybody else is doing. What can we do? I'm obviously good at construction. Like this is what I've been pulled to but how can I do it better? How can I have an impact? And then that's when I started to do a little bit more research, found uh, certified passive homes. And we actually just kind of kicked it off and built our own certified passive home. And it kind of built from there. And that knowledge is just stuff that we would bring into all of our other future projects. Uh, And I started to become pulled towards doing that and, and really focusing on the stuff that you don't see in a house, right? Most people are all focused on the stuff that you do see, right? The pretty kitchens, the bathrooms, the exterior cladding, which is all important, right? But mm-hmm. it's not the stuff that you feel, right? So we focus like where our focus is really on what you feel in a home and what you experience and the smell when you walk in. Like, I don't know what homes are like where, where you live, uh, but like if you've been to Florida, like there's really musky, like moldy smells because they're not built well. Here, we got to deal with both extremes. Um, and usually like you leave and go for vacation and you'd come back to a home and you're like, ah, oh, it doesn't smell good in here. It's because it's been empty. The answer is no, it's actually always smells like that. And you're just used to it because you're living in it all the time. Uh-huh. Right. So it wasn't until where it really hit home for me is we built our, our certified passive home and we left and we went to Florida for a few months at one point. And when I came back, the house smelled like wood, right? It didn't smell musty. It didn't smell moldy. It didn't smell like it was so-called empty. It actually smelled fresh in the house. And I'm like, all right, this is the stuff that you can't show on a picture. You can't show in a video. You can talk about it like we are now, but you have to really experience it. And it's, it's one of those things where, uh, I think if the only thing we can really relate it to is like, Hey, what don't you like about your house? These are the things that you don't like. We can solve those things. We can solve the cold basement or the cold concrete floor. It doesn't have to be done like that. We can solve the musty smell in your house. We can solve the uh, moisture issues on your windows. Those are things that we can address. And when people are the clients that we deal with have been homeowners already, it's not like their first time homeowner. Like what we do is, is custom. So it's more expensive. Uh, they realize 
you can usually, I can connect on that front, right? They want a healthy home for their, for their kids, right? They want to, they're working from home more often. So it's more important to them. They want it comfortable. They want to reduce their energy bills. Uh, all these things that we can address that isn't because it looks pretty in any way. It's the stuff that you really need to focus on that's behind the drywall and behind the cladding. Interesting. Now, you know, it's so funny and I'm, I'm, maybe a lot of other people are thinking this, but I just thought with a house has been empty, that's meant to smell like that. Right. And I think that's what we <laughs> tend to start believing because it happens so often. Yeah. Um, but clearly there's far more stuff to it. And this is where you come in. This is where you educate us, Casey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and teachers know there's a different way of living totally. So tell us a little bit about some of these things you, you spoke about smell. Right. What other things should be should we be looking at or educating ourselves about when it comes to our homes and having a sustainable home? So I'll put it this way. So I'll talk about the envelope. When you look at a home, the way that at least here, uh, the homes have been built over De uh, decades, mm -hmm. it was really kind of looking at each part individually, right? You have your foundation, you have your framing, you have like everything wasn't really tied together. But what we have to do is we have to look at the whole home as a system. Now we've realized that through the building science, what works and what doesn't work. And there's been tests and lots of bad examples of things that's happened and, and so forth. But when we look at the whole house as a system, we start to realize that everything plays a very important role in it. So if I'm talking about the envelope, I'm, I'm talking about kind of the shell of the home, right? The, the floor, the walls, the roof. Um, and if I, I can compare it to our bodies. So we don't want our homes to breathe in the sense that we don't want the walls to breathe, just like we don't breathe through our skin, right? As a, as a, as a, our body, we perspire through our skin. We sweat through our skin. We breathe through our lungs, Right. So that's how we want to think of a home. We want to make sure that our home is air as airtight as possible, but has the ability to perspire, to sweat. Right. So vapor can travel through it if need be, but we don't want air to travel through it. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that we bring fresh air into it 24 seven, just like we have to breathe 24 seven. Uh, but we want to filter the air and precondition it just like when we breathe through our nose, right? The air gets filtered through our nostrils, through the nose hairs. And I'm not a scientist by any means, but you know, and it kind of gets preconditioned before it goes into your lungs. And then you breathe out the bad, uh, right. breathe out the bad stuff. That's how we want to look at it. So we do have ERVs, fresh air systems that can run 24 seven, that are, we wanna control the air coming into the house, right? So they run 24 seven, they bring fresh air into the house all the time, they get rid of stale air all the time, but they don't mix, but they preconditions. So as the air comes into the home, it's preconditioning the air, uh, it's sorry, it's getting getting preconditioned by the air leaving the home, but it's not mixing. It's just going through a core where the heat gets transferred from one side to the other. So if it's here, we get really cold winters, for example, if it's minus 25 degrees Celsius outside and we have it set at 20 degrees inside, you don't want minus 25 degree air coming in. Uh, okay. You want it to be preconditioned. So once it gets preconditioned, really just a fan running, maybe it comes in at like 16 degrees, depending on how efficient the, the air is or 12 degrees. Either way, it's still warmer, right? But then you get the fresh air so that you have good indoor air quality. And what happens is that most homes, they don't take into consideration the air tightness. They don't care about the air barrier. They never even any, most people don't even know what the air barrier is. They talk about vapor barrier sort of stuff. And they think air barrier, vapor barrier are the same thing, but it's not. They're very different. But once you have a builder or somebody who understands all the different barriers of a home, air barrier, vapor barrier, weather barrier, and knows how to do them properly for the climate in which you're building, then you can build a much better home that will be healthy and comfortable and by default much more efficient when you're right. living in it. I like that. Now I can imagine people thinking, oh goodness, that just sounds like a lot and it sounds really expensive, right? But what are the benefits of making sure that you're living in a sustainable home? So what well, like custom is expensive, but the practices that I'm talking about are not expensive. You can put a little bit more attention to detail, still build to minimum building code, for example, just make the building more airtight and maybe use uh, 
yeah, you can even stick with the same insulation if you want, right? If you're sealing up the building and bringing in and putting in the fresh air system, you'd be okay to use whatever. Obviously there's products that are better for a carbon footprint. There's carbon, there's products that are better for, for uh, the occupants, right? Um, I'm an advocate for using products that, for example, the insulation that gets used here a lot is fiberglass, but I kind of, the, the next step up, which is not necessarily that much better for the environment, but uh, it's better in terms of like an insurance policy is called rock wool. Uh, it's a, it's a mineral wool insulation. And I like to use it because we just have to assume that water will get into our wall assembly at some point, somehow. Yeah. And with mineral wool insulation, mold won't grow on it. It's naturally fire retardant. So it doesn't have all the added fire retardants in it already. And if it gets wet, it won't lose its R value. Whereas fiberglass has a fire retardants. It has, if it gets wet, it will lose its R value and mold can grow on it. So it's not really... To me, sometimes the cheaper option is the more expensive option in the long run, right? Yeah. Which usually always is. Yeah. Uh, so, so there are certain things that you can do that aren't necessarily going to cost that much more for your home. Right. Okay. I see. That's interesting. So that just shows us that there's so much more we need to learn from, you know, builders just like yourself, Casey, because a lot of them aren't about consciousness and aren't about sustainability, <laughs> right? Unfortunately, they're not. Um, Hence why we have the Conscious Builder Academy. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Now, I wanted to move on to that, actually, because you mentioned that you are going out there coaching, teaching, um, guiding other construction companies on how to do the same thing that you're doing, right? Better people's lives. Why did you decide to do this? And, I mean... Why would people come to you to learn how to do this? I think, well, so why did I start it? Uh, obviously, I want to lead by example. Like I said, my my son is has driven that. And and I do want to have an impact on the industry, right? So to some extent, there is, I'm not going to lie, there is obviously an ego part to it. <laughs> but at the same part, like I want to make sure that I do my part in my little part of the world. And I feel like if I don't, then I'm almost wasting my time here on earth. Uh, so that's just what I'm being pulled to or what I'm being called to, uh, right now. And I just, the way, I don't know if it's the way I was brought up or what's in me is just, I feel like I need to do more. I always need to do more than what I did yesterday sort of thing. So I'm going to continue going with that until I don't feel like that anymore at this right, point. Right. And um, I love it because, you know, you're not just, you're not just a builder, right um mm. you are a creator you're a coach you're a family man you're a business owner you're an entrepreneur like you're all of these things combined and i like the way that you're very creative in finding other ways or other elements branches that you can then start shooting off at using one business right and and so it's not just about making money in your business and creating fantastic, sustainable homes, but it's also teaching other entrepreneurs, other construction business, how to do this and how to create better homes for everybody else in the world. And like I already mentioned, there isn't many people like yourself. So the fact that you're teaching people and coaching them how to do this is freaking amazing, Casey. Thank you. Appreciate it. No worries. Now, I know at this point, people are probably thinking, oh my goodness, Maybe I need to start learning more about this. Maybe I need to look at my home. Or maybe I need to hire cases to come down and check out my house and see what improvements I can make. Or maybe there's companies out there listening to this episode and thinking, oh, I need to learn what he knows with my construction business. So if there are anyone like that thinking this, Casey, where can they go to connect with you? So the best place, if you're the contractor, head to consciousbuilderacademy.com. We do have, we're building up our, our online courses right now, but we do have a course that is in pre-sale right now. It goes for sale uh, April 25th, if I believe it's, it's about, it's definitely for the businesses. So it's about how to market and sell passive homes or other high performance homes. Uh, and so I'm going to show people how to lock this in because it's not an easy sale. Like I described in terms of 
you're, you're kind of selling the feeling. It's not the pretty pictures and everything. They, they can look good obviously as well, but there's kind of some added hurdles to, to selling the benefits of building a better home, kind of like what we've been talking about. Right. So I'm going to share with people what's been working for us and why we have over seven and a half million dollars worth of work locked in on the construction side right now. Um, so, so that's a big one. And then obviously there's other business courses. There's a free court. There's some free courses there as well. Uh, and for everybody else who just wants to learn about building better, we do a ton on YouTube and we have our podcast as well. Uh, but YouTube is obviously good because you get to see what we're doing and you can just search the Conscious Builder on YouTube and we'll pop up. Okay, brilliant. Fantastic. Guys, listen, if you have learned something new here that you did know about and you want to know more, then please, please, please go ahead and connect with Casey. I'm sure he'll be happy to get on a call with you and, you know, answer any of your questions. Go check out those videos. Go check out his courses. Go check out his website and make sure you start learning about all these things that you didn't really know, really know about homes. All right, guys. Again, Casey, thank you so much for coming onto our show. Oh my goodness, so many golden nuggets in such a short time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the Uncensored Society podcast at www.uncensoredsocietypodcast.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get this and every other episode that's coming out. We have lots of great stuff coming, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss it. And thank you in advance for all the reviews and comments. I appreciate it so much and I look forward to serving you in next week's episode.